Walk in, walk in. In the back. Broken on Gibby, get him up. Turn right here. Knocked him. Oh, his body's up. Good fucking nades. Good nades. That's huge. That's fucking big. That's huge. Let's go. Holy shit, Nick. Let's fucking go. Finish the shit. Piss on him. Hello and welcome to today's video. I'm Fire. I'm the anchor for Team Inferno, so I play characters like Gibby. I just want to give you guys a little background into who I am as for some of you who may not know before we get into the video. I have like three, four months of comp experience, around like 30, 40 games of like comp, including scrims and tournaments. Uh, what else is there? I'm a roller player, so there's that. Take that as you will, hate it or love it. <laughs> and let's just transition into what to expect from the ALGS. All right, let's top into what to expect. I want to put this out there first because this is a, the, one of the most important ones. Griefing. You are going to, well, shoot, before I even say what griefing is for new comp players or people new to the scene, griefing is usually the term used when a team, I guess, jumps on you or comes to fight you or basically comes to disrupt your play with a no net benefit to them. Like, they're not trying to get the KP. They're not trying to, like, um, get your resources. They're just trying to make it harder for you with no net gain to them. Like in some scenarios, it might be confusing on what griefing is. A team might just look to get you out early so they can get a better position. Like when it's like top 10, top five, but usually if it's like the middle of the game, jumping on you for no reason, usually griefing. <laughs> uh, so with that being said, for all the new people, there are what, five rounds in the qualifiers um, that spans up to like three or two days, right? You play three rounds the first day, and then, what is it, like one round for, um, is it like whole day? I, I forgot, I forgot the whole entire process, it's been like a week. <laughs> but for the first couple of rounds, you are gonna be getting griefed. That's just said. My coach was three points for making it to the finals, and he got griefed on the semifinals because the top two players, or the top two teams in his lobbies were already like set to move on. So they didn't really care how their play style was. They just played loose and fun with it, right? Not just like in, like, don't get me wrong, griefing's annoying, but it's just how it is. You got gold four players coming in here. You have console lobby players. And when I say console lobby, nothing against you console players out there, right? I came from console. But usually some of these people are just like doing this for fun, getting friends together and going at it, you know? So even the team that won, that initially qualified, I think like we had several encounters with them in the first round. Team Intel, right? Like, I can show you a clip on the screen right now. We were, yeah, we were loading my shotgun. All right, after this round, I'm going for Rose on bad. Hey, 80 on her, 80, 80, 80, 80 88 right. on Valkyrie. Oh, okay, okay, keep your knock down, keep your yep. knock down. Yep, keep my knock down up. They All just right. got knocked, they just got knocked, they got knocked. Yeah. Hold up. Yep, I'm keeping it up. All right, I'm losing back first. Yep, 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 yep. Yep, yep, keep going, keep going. Right. Cross it, cross it. Keep it knocked down. Oh, it's gone, man. it's gone, it's gone. It's only him you gotta fight. It's only him you gotta fight. Oh my um, god, dude. Only both of them. Why is that? Why here. are they not dead yet? I don't understand. Like, who uh, is in this fucking building that are not fucking fighting? Dude? Like, what is happening? Who is in this building just not fighting? I don't understand. Until goes down right here, too. I don't understand. We're in a hotel. They would caught we would crack them, they would come back. They would crack them, they would come back. And they just end up dying. It was griefing. They already knew they had the lobby, but they just kept coming back to fight us. We there was like a split second where we could have left. That was on us. You know, you're not fully on them. You had to learn how to deal with griefing in these lobbies. But man, teams are just gonna come at you and you gotta learn to adapt to that. When a fight is starting, whether you're holding resistance and you know it's been going on for a minute, leave. Even if you're holding position, leave no matter who you are. The whole lobby is just gonna be storming. All right, next thing I want to get into: unfull lobbies. Um, don't know if this was a um, since it was the first qualifier or attempt at qualifying. I don't know if it was something with the way that the website set up. Hopefully, have everything's fixed. Um, but just in case they don't, the first round you will not be playing in a full lobby. You'll be playing with like 15, 14. I see even some lobbies start with 13 squads. What this means for the games you compete in, you will have less chance at KP. A lot less chance. And what that means, you're gonna have to change your play style up quite a bit. 
if you're a team that's focused on rotating, you might want to play edge because if you rotate too fast, there's going to be a lot of open. You're going to get to your location fast. There's not going to be no one contesting you. You're just going to get straight to your location. You're going to sit there, right? And it takes a while for people to find each other with these unfull lobbies, right? So usually the kills you get from rotating are not going to be there. The kills you get from people rotating in late are not going to be there. So you're going to have to change your play style. Definitely change it up for this game. All right. This is going to be an important one because I can guarantee you, if you don't get these lobbies, which some of you might not, there's a lot of people who are going to definitely try to qualify this time around too. But most likely a good hand will be full, you guys. And your first two lobbies, probably all the way to semifinals, right? You will be facing one or two teams in your group that are going to be stomping the lobby. They're going to be playing it like <laughs> they're going to be playing it like it's a kill race. And for you, there you go, new people to the kill race. Kill races is when you land in pubs and you just search for kills and see if you can get the most amount of kills in a short amount of time. That's how they're going to be playing it. They're going to play so they get a huge chunk, a huge chunk, um, to get qualified. Usually, what they'll do is they'll leave the first game out. They'll Play the first game normal, play it slow. But once they realize what lobby they're in, they're stomping it out. They are going to stomp it clean. And what I recommend you guys do, because these teams, even if they play it slow the first game, they will most likely win due off pure gun skill. Look at their skins. Look at the characters playing. They're not going to switch it up. I guarantee you they probably will not switch it up. Look at the skins. Remember, Memorize them. You see that? Run. Just run. I promise you it would be a lot better to avoid that team. And it's actually building a skill too, because tier one teams in the pro league even don't want to fight some certain teams. They'll remember skins, they'll remember who they are, they'll look at the kill feed and like, oh, that's that team, let's avoid them. This is a skill you'll need later on, so it's not something like you're not going to get used to doing. But I guarantee you, if you're looking at this video right now, you're going to want to run away from that team. Play it slow. If you get a chance to third party, great. But if you notice your lobbies like this, best your best option is to play the ring because they're going to clear out the lobby a lot of teams are not going to be able to get kill points and you just have to play purely off placement points all right that's going to segue into my next talking point your plans are not going to work your plans just straight up might not work listen no matter where you're from if you're a console pretz three stack if you're a pc lobby pretz stack if you're a team that plays only comp and scrims and stuff like that right Whatever you're going for you is going to just hit the fan because this ALGS is replicating um, these lives replicating how I put it. It's a mixture of everything. It's a mixture of a comp play style. It's a mixture of a kill race, depending on if you have those two guys I talked about prior or those two teams I talked about prior. It's a mixture of ranked like <laughs> you're just going to see so many different wild things, right? You're going to be getting like in the building holding, right? Three people are going to be fighting your building and you'll see a team from far. That's choosing just to shoot you inside while out looking at people at the top. It is completely unreasonable. No matter what your expectations are of comp or any place that you had, it's going to hit the fan. So what I do recommend is if you were like a slower playing style comp, like say a comp that looks for purely focusing defensive comp, like say like Crypto, um, Caustic, and who else? Like maybe another defensive legend or like a escape legend. I want you to focus your comp on like purely a protection playstyle, a playstyle that utilizes getting in and out really fast. So like a really good one that's been meta for a long time, even after the Octane nerfs, um, Gibby Octane Bloodhound, right? Scanning a building before you entering or scanning an area with Bloodhounds, really great. Octane Jump Pass, great at escaping. Or even, screw if you're a team that's good without scans, I recommend Wraith, Bloodhound, and Gibby. I would recommend Gibby with all these comps because you're gonna be rotating and get caught in the most weird, the weirdest positions out there. So against these lobbies, I would suspect the full worst. But by the time you get to the third, the third round or semifinals, you can start going back to your um, regular play style. If that's like comp based or something like that. Cause if you know that it works in tournaments before, it's more likely gonna work higher up there. I mean, the potential for griefing is still slightly there, but it's nothing like the first two rounds. It is literally a hectic crap storm. I promise you that. So look into maybe having two comps, Switching something up for the first two rounds or something like that. This is not as big as the other tips I'm bringing up right now, but it's one I should definitely bring notice to. The champs you're gonna be playing, not meta champs. It's gonna be kind of more random than pubs, I promise you. The pick rate is through the wall. With the next qualifier coming up, I guarantee you, you're gonna be seeing Rampart. All right, already faced Mirages in the last qualifier of the first round. 
Um, you're gonna be facing Bangalores. You're probably be facing Watsons. There was, I already know there's a guy named Blight who plays like Fuse already in the higher elo. So you, you will be facing Fuse players. It's gonna be all over the place. <laughs> I tell you this, right? So like usually in meta and team comps, Teams are used to just taking the Gibby fights, you know? Like, all right, we're gonna push their dome, then dome us, or we're gonna dome here, and they're gonna use their dome, and we're gonna engage when they use their dome. That mindset, not gonna work here. You're gonna be seeing lifelines. You're gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna have run, like say, a Kraber on the Gibby, or we're gonna run like heavy snipers on this, go a pick, and then jump out and engage. Guarantee you, they have a lifeline. They probably gonna have a lifeline on that team. There's gonna be rev pushes and totems, even with this broken buff, and stuff like that. So I guarantee you, I'm saying I guarantee you a lot of things, but I'm, I'm telling you right now, if you're going into this um, LGS qualifier with the mindset that most people are going to be running Gibby Octane or some version of that comp or Valkyrie Caustic or something like that, most likely they will not. For the first three rounds, they will be running some weird comp and your play style is going to have to get used to that. All right. So we're moving on to my last little talking point, my last little suggestion, tip, whatever you want to call it. Pressure. Pressure is a huge thing when it comes to comp play. If you're new to it, even some existing players still have it. Um, it just gone away or gone lesson. My IGL, great IGL. Man is the most dedicated player I've ever seen. Even more t dedicated than like T1 teams, right? Man hits a Kovacs an hour a day. My man is training, solo queuing. He's getting his hours in. We recently switched to a comp that had Valkyrie. I've seen this man play nothing but Valkyrie. This man is a dedicated player, right? But still in comp, I th this was recent news to me. Like at the beginning, he had some pressure, but then it kind of flew away. But in our recent, like after LGS, I guess it kind of came back because it's the biggest tournament we had yet. Like just a chance to qualify, a chance to make a name for yourself. This this is a huge opportunity, right? And one of our um, VOD reviews, right? Not to get a little too much away from what we do or what we talk about, right? Uh, when talking to one of our coaches, he mentioned that some calls he's afraid to make, not because me or my other teammate can't land the shots because he feels like he might not make the shot and then he feel like that put us in a bad position because he can't make shots even though we know this man is a certified beamer like he's a better beamer than like everyone in lobby besides me anyway that's besides the point he's a good beamer right and uh <laughs> i'm getting so sidetracked but one thing i my best tip i, I i'm gonna give this to him later right what i notice when he gives the calls like of course like, i don't have to worry as much because i'm not IGL. when he gives the call to focus a target or we're gonna push out right here and shoot, I'm thinking right now, I'm gonna turn this corner and I'm gonna destroy this man for everything I got, right? I'm gonna lock on with my aim assist and destroy him, right? But this is not the same way. I'm thinking this way, like I realize, I'm realizing now, a lot of people don't think like this. What they think is when I'm gonna pull out right here and hit this right and beam this guy, I'm not, they're not thinking I'm gonna beam this guy. They're thinking, all right, if I don't beam this guy, um, I'm gonna have to use another clip, I'm gonna come back out. And if I don't beam him, I miss this opportunity. If I don't beam him, my team's gonna be in a bad position. If I don't beam him, I'm gonna fail my team and I'm gonna have to deal with the ridicule. I'm gonna look bad. They're like, they're over complicating the situation. I'm not telling you to like, come out here and like, you, like hit the most nastiest play. I'm not telling you to hit a Twitter. I'm just telling you to walk out, look at a guy and pull the trigger. You don't hit him, you don't hit him. You hit him, you hit, you hit him, that's good. You follow the play as best as you do. Don't think about what if after, what if before. It's, you're overcomplicating. You're putting in too many inputs. It's like if I smash my keyboard, my, my, my PC is gonna have a hard time trying to input all of them at once. It's gonna be like, what the fuck's going on? So my, my little tip for people who deal with a lot of pressure, don't worry, act like this is a normal game and just follow through with your IGLs calls you will always be able to revamp your calls if it's a bad call, but don't overthink your your shot. Or like, you know what I mean. Don't overthink an action. If your IGL says, pull out, shoot this guy, let's focus on shooting the guy. If your IGL says, let's rotate here, focus on just rotating, sliding and giving me hide and cover. Action by action. Not It's not that hard. I mean, okay, when I say it's not that hard, I mean, it's not that like complicated as people make it out to be. And if you learn to slowly take step by step, just a single action and put that to motion, you'll be a lot better and you'll be a lot more consistent on your shots too. And with that being said, if you made it all the way to the end of the video, I wanna say thank you for tuning in to my information guide. Let me know, I'm starting, I'm you know new with this, letting informational guides for comp play, Apex, I'm gonna do a lot more of these. If you guys want any further details, let me know in the comments, give a like, all that good stuff. I do wanna wish 
a good luck to all the new teams out there. Because we, we we're still fairly new for a company. We're like four months deep. Good luck. Don't stress it. Get in the range. Work VOD review. Huge, big, big, big thing. Work with your team. See what's wrong. Call out what's wrong with your team. Don't go for each other's throat. All that good stuff. If you like what you said. Uh, oh, shit, oh, my God. Uh, you can tell I'm recording this late. If you like what you saw, please leave a like, subscribe, all that good stuff. This is going to be a great journey. I'm going to do more stuff about Inferno, more stuff about, you know, content creation. A lot, a lot of good stuff on the way. And with that being said, I hope you have a good day. Bounce with it, just bounce with it. Everybody when to come, I'm announcing it. I'm always gon' get it, I'm always gon' get it. Even if you sit back denouncing it. But I'm a good kid, I rock gold, I'm never 